Without a doubt, the talk of the town this week has been AMD's sudden delay of their RX 9070 XT and RX 9070 graphics cards to launching in March instead of, I think, what we all assumed would be launching in January. And we weren't wrong to assume that either, with numerous outlets showing pictures that prove RDNA 4 graphics cards are already in stores, and me myself reporting that I know people at micro centers that say they have shelves of these things in the back room. So clearly, AMD did, at one point recently, plan to launch RDNA 4 this month, or they wouldn't have shipped their cards already. And I guess I will say this here first, retailers are pretty mad they have to hold on to these cards. And if there is one thing you had to definitely, you know, easily defendably attack AMD for right now this week, it would be that they're making their retail partners hold the bag, hold stock, which costs them money that they can't sell for, well, they don't even really know the date yet. That is fair criticism of AMD without a doubt, and that is really odd and shows that there is a bit of chaos and clumsiness still over there at Radeon. However, that obvious mistake that damages AMD's relationship with the retail partners aside, I actually think there is a lot of good reason for AMD to push back the RDNA 4 launch instead of rushing it like they did, honestly, multiple times in the past, and it never really seemed to get them anywhere. That's mostly what I want to talk about today in this video. And it's funny because the subject of today's video, or the main subject, I should say, this was going to be the second half of an RTX 5090 analysis video. That was the original plan. But seeing hardware unboxed say things that are eerily similar to what people at Radeon have told me this week, and then also seeing AMD respond to that, and seeing all the confusion out there, I thought, actually, this should just be a video that comes out as soon as possible, so that when you go into RTX 5090 reviews, you have in the back of your head, oh yeah, this is why AMD delayed RDNA 4 to March, I now get it, and yes, I am hinting at this, I have full RTX 5090 review data, so tonight I will also just be divulging what I am seeing before the official launch, and it's because it directly ties into why I think AMD wants you to see NVIDIA unclothed before they announce RDNA 4, because once you do that, I don't know, I don't think Blackwell is looking as pretty as a lot of people were hoping it would. That's the first of the three points I want to get to right now as to why AMD at least believes they made the right decision pushing back the RDNA 4 launch. You see, that's point number one. Until third-party reviews are out for at least the RTX 5090 and 5080, but possibly you could argue you even need 5070 Ti and 5070 reviews out because NVIDIA claimed at CES that the 5070 is faster than the 4090. Until third-party reviews come out and say that is complete nonsense, it's not even close, then AMD really can't market their cards effectively because NVIDIA will just keep shouting, wrong, it doesn't matter if they beat the RTX you know, 4070 Ti Super or even 4080, we're stronger than the 4090. Until you have bad reviews or at least reasonable reviews that tell you the truth, AMD doesn't feel like they have it in them to try to argue with NVIDIA's complete BS claim. So that's point number one. Point number two, which is really more important and something that I think more people should be thinking about based on prior criticism to Radeon, AMD really feels that even if fake frames are mostly nonsense, they need to have FSR4 in their own software stack up to par with NVIDIA, or at least close, before they bother to launch their RX 9070 XT. This is something that's been talked about a ton on Broken Silicons. You know, me and my co-host Dan will make fun of AMD. Like, NVIDIA comes out, announces some new crazy feature, and then AMD comes out a day later and goes, oh, we are doing that too, um, and it's coming out. T TBD, do be decided. We don't know. We'll see when it's coming out. And then it doesn't come out for a freaking year. That's something AMD doesn't want to do anymore. Like, they want to have at launch perfectly polished drivers. None of this fine wine nonsense. The drivers are mature, the software is ready, and when you get day one reviews, it is putting your best foot forward. And because NVIDIA is so heavily leveraging their software features this generation, because the actual performance uplift isn't that big, by the way, AMD feels they need to do the same. And that second point actually gets me to the final one. And this is something that I've heard consistently, and I will put some quotes on screen now while I talk over the overall narrative here. But these are 
quotes from people at AMD, and they basically all paint the same picture. And it is one where they are tired of launching products when the market tells them they need to. They want to launch products when they feel they are actually ready. And I was directly told by multiple people that this shift in strategy, this all comes down to Jack Hewn, who is now overseeing both semi-custom and graphics. I was told, by the way, this person is responsible for canceling big RDNA 4, and that was a big fight. And it was also his decision last minute to push back RDNA 4 to make sure the drivers are perfectly polished, to make sure they have a tidal wave of supply so that there's none of this, you know, arguing over if you can get these cards if they get good reviews. And also, just again to make sure that fsr4 is ready for launch day this person thinks that amd has been making too many mistakes trying to launch before or next to nvidia when they're not ready because they felt like they had to and trying to compete at performance levels they can't afford to every generation and to be entirely honest the data backs this up. If you look at pre-RDNA generations, you can see that when AMD was mostly focusing on the mid-range and just sometimes launching half a year or a year, usually at least a couple weeks or a month after NVIDIA, that they were gaining or at least maintaining a large percent of the market. And it was when they went for top performance, trying to beat NVIDIA to market with some of their products that AMD lost market share. And if you'll notice, when did they start recovering? Polaris. And I'm just being objective here. If you're sitting back and looking at this, you've got to go that those were the glory days. That's when we were doing well. And we need to get back to doing that until we have our stuff together. And look, if NVIDIA wants to make a bunch of BS claims, let's not let them compare themselves to us. Let's let the reviewers tear them apart which I think they might do with RTX 5090 reviews that I want to now talk about now what I have seen of the performance data for the 5090, but first an ad from a sponsor. This piece of content is brought to you by Highlight AI. Highlight AI is an on-screen assistant that helps you complete your tasks 10 times faster, whether that's homework, emails, Discord, Twitch responses, social posts, and so much more. It really just lets you analyze all data and move forward quicker than you would by yourself. For example, as a test, I decided to take some internal AMD test benchmarks for RDNA 4 that I've had, ones that I read from on a recent broken silicon but haven't shown the pictures as of recording of this ad, and I asked it, is the 9070 XT at 599 competitive against the RTX 5070? And I actually was surprised to find it quite adept at reading the document that I had, and well, I also found it funny that its overall conclusion was that NVIDIA had not provided enough information to conclude if the 5070 is actually good value compared to really any graphics card out there, which, yeah, I agree with it. And what you saw there was just but one of many prompts that they have in their prompt library, which is a massive library you'll have access to for many different use cases if you download Highlight AI. And so what are you waiting for, really? Support Moore's Law is Dead by signing up and downloading the Highlight desktop app through the link below to save time on work like I just did and spend more time gaming or doing other things you like doing, like Maybe riding a motorcycle like I have been with my time off. Again, support Moore's Law is Dead by checking out Highlight AI today. All right, then. Let's just sit back and look at what I have here for RTX 5090 performance data based on a full set of review information that I was sent from a, fan, a friend of the channel. And no, I'm not going to say who, and I am going to add plus or minus 5%, somewhere within there, maybe it's 2%, 3%, to whatever numbers I say, just so you can't easily go back and go, oh, that's what review he's talking about. But I guess on that note, it is important for me to first have a disclaimer. This is one review. I see averages fluctuate as much as 10% sometimes in some of these launches. And so don't assume that what I'm telling you is what it's going to be if you average all of the results from hardware and box and gamers nexus and tech power up and like Paul's hardware at the same time. This is one of the reviews, but it is from a very, very major outlet that you all have used if you're watching this, I'm sure. But anyways, going back to the performance what I'm seeing here for the RTX 5090 is 30 to 35 percent higher performance in 4K, which is pretty much what I think people have been expecting at this point. But you know what that means is if 
nearly doubling the bandwidth of the 4090 to the 5090 and adding 25% more cores gets you only like a 35% or something, 40 in some averages, maybe 30% in others, you know, uplift. Then what do you think is going to happen with the cards that are lower down the stack that have a smaller specs uplift relative to their predecessors with Blackwell? I don't think you should expect large performance uplifts for some of the cards below the 5090 because of this. And it gets even worse, of course, if you go into 1440p, where just eyeballing it here, I'm seeing less than a 20% uplift in 1080p. I am seeing what looks like, yeah, less than a 10% uplift from the 4090 to the 5090, which again, I don't know who buys 5090 to pay in 1080p, but it is also worth pointing out that even 1440p, this card would be a complete waste of money. Like actually, if you think about it, if a 4090 was, let's say, $1,600 and a 5090 was 2000 God knows it probably won't be on average, but you know, the 1440p performance uplift, it's actually worse price performance than the 4090, despite the massive specs uplift and a 25% at least increase in cost. Now, what shocked me more than this, though, is the ray tracing performance. Again, it's going to vary by title, and I would guess that in some fully path-traced games, the uplift is bigger than this. But what I'm seeing is rast ray tracing to raster performance, very little uplift from Lovelace to Blackwell, which there was a pretty large ray tracing to raster uplift from Ampere to Lovelace. Like, in other words, if you have a game that is like, you know, only raster and it seems to get a 30% uplift, if you switch to ray tracing mode, it seems to remain from what I'm seeing here a 30% uplift, unless, and here's the disclaimer, you really crank up frame generation. Because even DLSS and a test I'm seeing here between them, without frame generation turned on doesn't seem to make a huge difference with the 5090 30 percent is 30% if that's what you get whether it's ray tracing DLSS or raster and that's pretty shocking to me because I recently leaked that RDNA 4 performance check out that video if you haven't seen it in ray tracing seems to get pretty close to Lovelace suggesting that I don't know the 9070 or at least 9070 XT unless again you're doing Full ray tracing, full path tracing, it might be close ray tracing performs to the 5070 or even 5070 Ti. That's very disappointing to me. And then moving on to the most disappointing thing I've seen, power consumption. Now it's going to depend on the card, but I'm seeing results here that suggest that the performance per watt could be worse even in gaming than the 4090. Meaning, let's say you know, that the 5090 is 30, 35% faster than the 4090. Even with that, it seems to be using more than that more power, like maybe 40, 50% more power. This shocks me because as critical as I was, and I think at first I was a little too critical of the 4090 a couple of years ago, you know, over time it became clear that though the 4090 is rated as a 450 watt GPU, usually it was consuming, I mean, honestly, I have a 4090, usually it's consuming like 350, 300 watts, uh, especially when you cap frame rates. And it's really push it to even get above 400 watts. That does not seem to be the case with Blackwell. Now, I don't, if you run it with, you know, V-Sync or cap the frame rate, I'm sure it doesn't just consume 600 watts, but I have seen results today that suggests close to that power usage in uncapped gaming, which is like what you would have expected from a, what is it, 575 watt card running Blender or something, not in gaming. So the efficiency doesn't really seem to be there with Blackwell. And so again, just summarizing what I believe, half of you will probably watch this on review day, what you'll be seeing is a Blackwell generation that doesn't seem to bring the performance uplift you would expect from the massive increase in bandwidth it's gotten. And on top of that, NVIDIA doesn't really have seemed to put that much effort into making the, again, I'd say reasonable ray tracing performance improve. Like, yes, maybe full path tracing and some demo is wildly higher than Lovelace, but you're not going to be getting good frame rates at that in a real game anyways. And then real frame, in games running ray tracing that can achieve actually usable frame rates, like 60 to 144 hertz, doesn't really seem to be much of an uplift unless you use frame generation, which I don't think a lot of people want to use. And all of this comes with a massive increase in power consumption. And so to bring it all back home to RDNA 4, 
Do you see now, after all that explanation and me telling you 5090 performance, really just reacting to it right before the reviews go live, do you see why AMD might think it's a good idea to push back the RDNA 4 launch? From what we can tell and from what I've seen in performance data that I've leaked of RDNA 4, AMD might have a card, the 9070 XT, that is a fourth to a third the price of the 5090 while consuming nearly half the power and yet still giving you, despite all that lower power, despite that much, 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 much lower price, over half the performance of the 5090, possibly even in ray tracing in some not heavily NVIDIA biased titles. I think they just think they can afford to wait and that from now on, AMD needs to launch graphics cards when they're ready, not when the market tells them to rush it out because so far that has not worked for them. And so far, when they followed their own cadence and just gone for the parts of the market they thought needed servicing in the past, that was the era where Radeon was doing really well. And you know what? The funny thing is this, I've already talked about this and more people I've, I've noticed online are leaking more details regarding this as well. Nvidia's not really gonna have a lot of supply. They're not gonna have almost any supply of these graphics cards I believe I said this actually too, until about March anyways. And so I think AMD realizes that kind of NVIDIA's attempt to race ahead of them may just make them trip up. And then by the time they've gotten up, dusted themselves off, AMD will be there with a steady pace, ready to go with something that doesn't seem half-baked. And, you know, at the end of the day, I will say this as well. I cannot tell you how many people I saw say that RDNA 3's launch was rushed. The drivers didn't seem quite ready. They had that cooler issue that seemed like, really, was there a point in AMD rushing out RDNA 3 in 2022? I mean, it launched in the middle of December. That's already too late for a lot of holiday shopping anyways. What did that really get them? Well, this is the reaction to that. They think it didn't get them a lot. They think that had they waited for drivers to be ready to the state that they're in now, where they look really good against NVIDIA, by the way, relative to when they launched, that they probably would have sold way more cards because 90% of these cards, 95% of these cards aren't even sold in the launch month, guys. They're sold later, and they're sold to people that check those day one reviews in AMD. They want to make sure they're perfect, I believe. All right, that is going to do it for this video. To be clear, we're just going to have to see if this strategy works for AMD. And the fact that retailers already have cards tells you that this wasn't perfectly executed. They're still very clumsy. But for competition's sake, I'm hoping that a new shift in strategy will make a big difference. But of course, I'll be talking about that. I'll have more reaction videos to RTX 5000 GPU launches coming very soon. So make sure that you're subscribed to the Moore's Law Z YouTube channel and ring the bell button so that you do not miss them. And then also, please share the video, comment down below. Tell me what you think about what I proposed and leaked to you all today. And consider joining the Moore's Law is Dead Patreon where you can discuss these opinions with thousands of other fans in a civilized setting and get access to tons of bonus content there will be a bonus die shrink coming out this week as well with no ads you get access to it at the lowest tier and there's hundreds of them in a back catalog if you finish that one and want more it's all there for you on the moore's lies dead patreon but all right as i always say we made it this far or if you have made it this far into the video at a minimum thank you for watching <laughs>